the gyroscope in your X-roll airs, and you can use that to aim. So you can aim Whoa. with your head. So oh you can hold what? the GPD One Mini, and you can look to the right, and it'll aim. And of course, your screen is still on your glasses, so you see it move. Um, and it it sounded like it would be the most intuitive thing. And I tried it, and my brain broke. Like I could not. <laughs> I could not. Do it. Yeah, you start going like this, you're like. <laughs> What's going yeah. on? Yeah. Welcome back to the Nerd Nest Podcast, everybody. We've got, uh, boy, this is a piece of hardware that I think a lot of people have been very interested uh, talking about. And I figured we would start the show off because that thing looks really cool. And I saw your your tweets uh, about this thing and they kind of blew up. So t tell everybody uh, about like your hands on time with this and then everybody can start asking questions. Yeah, so this is the Ion Neo Flip DS. So uh, it's uh, very similar to other handheld PCs we've seen over the past year, like 7840U chip inside, although they do have the 8840U option for like 40 bucks more, so definitely go that way. But anyway, it's so it's a clamshell, but then the thing about it, there's two models. There's a keyboard model, but they sent me the DS model. Very smart of them, actually, to send the, the DS one to me as opposed to somebody else because I'm just doing all sorts of retro things on this. And it's kind of amazing. Like, it, it's... It's treating it like a second monitor. So if you think about, you know, you set up a computer and you've got your two monitors set up, anything you can think of in that kind of setup, you can do on this as well. It's just the screen is on the bottom. The screen itself is a little bit funky. So it's a three by two aspect ratio. And then it's like a 640p resolution and three and a half inches. So not big. It's basically the size of like a small retro handheld. Um, but it's big enough to be able to see text. And if you use it for like Wii U emulation or 3DS emulation, like you can put that on the bottom screen for your second screen and it's good enough. Like you, for the menus and maps that are usually in those games, like it's perfect. So yeah, pretty awesome. So the, 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 the original DS, not the XL or whatever, yeah. I can't remember how big that screen was, but it's, it's bigger than that screen, right? Right, it is bigger than that screen. Like it's it's uh Okay. And I think it might be bigger than the 3DS one. I'll I haven't done my comparisons yet. That's going to be after this episode. Uh but yeah, like I I am I have no issues with the screen being smaller. I think people are like, "Oh, that screen on the bottom's too small." And my reply has been, "No, it's because the screen at top is just amazingly large. It's seven inches, you know? And so yeah. it's just so big when it's at your face. Same size as like the Win Mini screen, basically. And so it's a good 1080p size screen. I mean, same as like the ROG Ally, same screen size. Yeah. That small screen too, I mean, like that was similar to the DS format, right? Like the top screen was the larger one and the bottom screen was the smaller one too. So right. I'm not surprised they went with that format. It seems, it seems like a good fit. And especially yeah. if they're tailoring it towards emulation, like you said, and then the use case that they always have on screen, of course, is that like IS space control panel thing. Right. So that seems like a good use case for that too. Yeah, and it can or like they already have set up things where it's got like a quick application start, so you can just like have a, a wall like a little row of different apps, like your favorite apps. So like push that button and Discord starts. Push that button, Spotify starts. You know that kind of thing. That is cool. Yeah, so, Carrie, you have a lot of experience with the ones that have a keyboard in the middle. Would you pref Would you prefer the keyboard or the dual screen version? Uh, so <clears throat> from my perspective, uh, I would prefer the keyboard version. And the only reason I would prefer the keyboard version is just because I have aspirations to always want to sometimes play uh, point, uh, well, not point and click, but old adventure games that were text-based input. Uh, and I, I always have that thought in my mind. So there's always that. However, um, while this is not something that I find to be ideal for myself, um, it, generally speaking, I think that it's wise of Aya to go in this direction because it differentiates themselves from Asus and Valve, who most likely wouldn't do this, and it makes themselves have a nice offering that they're not going to get anywhere else. And it's one of the strengths of PCs in general. PCs can do whatever the hell you want. So I'm ultimately a fan of it, even though I don't find that would be something that I would use or something that I would uh, look to use, um, but I still am a big fan of what they're doing. Just Russ, what's at... the comfort level like? Uh, not the best. So it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's like one of the things is so, I mean, it has grips on the back of it. Like it's got like these little uh, like 
bumps on it so you do get a little bit of a like ergonomic grip but it's not much but it's still you can definitely feel it and you're like oh i'm glad they did that uh but the front part of it and this is like kind of my lenovo legion go complaint too this is just like a 90 degree angle and so it does kind of you know as you're holding it it will like kind of dig into that part of your hand it's not terrible um but it's definitely something i noticed it also it has the same issues as the Win Mini in that it gets warm. Like it's just how it is. You know, you've got all the material at the bottom of it. And so it's kind of cramped all together in terms of like the CPU and whatnot. The left side in particular gets a little bit warm than the other. Even when playing something at a lower TDP, like you can play Wii U at about 10 watt TDP on this thing, no problem. It's still enough where I'm like, oh, I notice it. You know, I handed it to my wife and I'm like, hey, check this thing out. And she was like, and I'm like, yeah, it gets hot, right? And she's like, it's not hot. It's just kind of warm. Like you can feel it, you know? And so yeah. this is a total personal preference thing. I just don't like it when I can feel the, the heat of a device, you know? And so that's something I've noticed. But comfort-wise, uh, it's fine. It's it's a compromise, you know? Uh, it has those recessed switch sticks, so very similar to the Win Mini and Win Max kind of feel where they're just kind of inset in there and you're kind of flicking them as opposed to like full sticks. I really wish that they would come up with something like the Xbox Elite controller where you can pop off the analog stick you know because you just have that in a compartment somewhere and then throw those on when you want to have actual full gaming experience so aside yeah. from like the people always debate about symmetrical sticks versus asymmetrical asymmetrical sticks but aside from that just like that right analog does seem pretty far down compared to how comfortable the way it is comfortable to hold the win mini so is yeah. it uncomfortable to hold that right analog stick or is it you don't, Not at all. Go, I, I yeah. like the Xbox layout, so total bias. But like, nice. uh, yeah, no issue. Like, you do have to shift your hand a little bit, like it right. goes down a little bit, but it's not it's not bad. And so, um, yeah, that's not even a thought I had until you brought it up. Nice. Um, that's good yeah. to hear. <clears throat> the one thing that I find weird about this, uh, the design of it, is it's probably the most not Aya looking device Aya has ever Aya Neo has right. ever made. Because usually they're all they're very stylish. Like it, yeah. they're if you were just to have like a dummy unit and you looked at it, you'd be like, that looks like a gaming handheld. And yeah. you look at the I know flip and it's just like a brick. <laughs> so <I'm> like, <laughs> hey, what do you think of this brick, guys? Yeah. Um, uh, it's, yeah, the it's layout of like these top buttons too are just kind of, I don't know the, why they did that. Those they volume put the screen higher. Me. The yeah. volume yeah. buttons? <laughs> they're like, <laughs> just, at angles. Was like what? Yeah, I think I would like it better if the screen, if that was flipped, like what you're saying. Like yeah, that's what's like this could off. go up to higher, you know? Yeah. yeah. The, more the different sizes experience. don't really bug me that much because yeah. like, yeah, that's cool though. Oh, uh, you guys were talking about the distance between the two screens. Like, right. there's like this all be that up. room on the top. Like, yeah, that all those buttons should have been underneath the bottom <laughs> screen, right? So that the they're closer together. They should have yeah. put a third little screen there. <laughs> 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 little touch bar. It does have this little analog, like or not analog, but like uh, yeah, IR sure. mouse thing, like the GPD yeah, Win oven. Four, and so yeah. I do like that. That's oh. pretty great. So yeah. it does That's make cool. it easier to navigate, like with the Windows side of things, because you That's... like just the way it's set up, you will be in Windows more with this thing than you would like a single screen device, because you got to move those screens around, you know, set all that stuff up, and mm -hmm. it's. Windows is just not great at remembering exactly what you did last time. And so, like, I'll at start all. up Spotify. I'm like, hey, you probably want this now on the primary window. I'm like, no, I didn't, you know. <laughs> or the, the keyboard. Like, you, it would be so amazing if you could just have a bottom keyboard only, like a virtual keyboard. But it doesn't. Windows is like, you obviously want your on-screen keyboard to be on the primary window. And yeah. the only way you can move it down to the secondary one is to, like, make it small. And then you push it down. And then you try to expand it. And it goes, oh, you definitely want it back on the primary window. And so <laughs> right. every time, like, there's no perfect solution i think i is working on that they've said in their like um indiegogo campaign like comments they've said we have this working or whatever it's just not working yet for the isba software for me at least the the one question i have and i asked you in our discord is that they're both um native portrait displays they are have yeah. you had any particular issue getting games running in like especially emulators or anything or has that been like relatively trivial to set up totally trivial like no issues okay. i haven't nice. been playing like old pc games you know the ones that have all those yeah, wonky issues yeah, and yeah. stuff but mm -hmm. like from emulation standpoint like once i just set it to like landscape flipped or whatever i needed for the bottom screen in particular like no issues whatsoever nice. and so, that's awesome and it's cool it's so 120 hertz screen which right. means that you can use black frame insertion and the more modern versions of retroarch uh just have that as an option in the video settings and so playing retroarch like retro games is just 
and crazy good. Like you imagine Saturn with the Beetle Core, which is like the really accurate one, yeah. then with a, like a heavy duty shader on it, and then having a bottom screen to like do whatever else you want while you're playing Panzer Dragoon or whatever. It's like just Sick. a retro gaming like dream. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. That's awesome. I imagine That's Russ is sitting there with game. What was it Game Facts that used to have like all the yeah. tech? Oh, the yeah. Text, talking about that uh, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. walkthroughs <laughs> yeah so that's one of that's the use awesome. cases i wrote down yeah totally it's like you could have like a video or a guide below while yeah. you're playing the exact same game that so. is pretty cool very that's cool amazing how's the the i was looking at the specs and the weight seems pretty reasonable right like 650 grams um so between that and the battery life like how does that oh, come right. out to you because the battery life is like four the battery watts. capacity is like 45 watt hour yeah so yeah maybe so, on the low end it is hefty, like totally like you pick it up. You're like, oh, this is a machine, you know, what yeah. I mean? that kind of yeah. thing. Um, but no, no issue as far as like comfort of holding it over long periods of time other than the heat thing. Yeah. Um, and battery life is, is the same. You know, I've been looking at the specs. They sent me like a sheet and it shows like all of their testing and stuff. I haven't done thorough testing, but it looks like power draw is just one watt more when you have nice. the, um, the Not bad. second yeah. screen yeah. on. Yeah. And you can turn that off if you want as well. So makes sense. Yeah. Not bad. Good. That's, That's really cool. Another yeah. interesting uh, thing that I didn't think about until like late last night is that because that screen is 640p and 3 by 2 aspect ratio, that's a perfect 4x integer scale of Game Boy Advance. And so if you wanted to, you could go run through a bunch of like Game Boy Advance like role playing games on the bottom screen while watching something in the big beautiful 1080p up above it. And so you think a lot about oh you're going to game on the primary one and then do something smaller on the little one, but like there's the opposite thing you could do as well. You know, have, have a Game Boy Advance game running while you're like watching a, a, a show, you know? And so that's kind of neat use case as well. Like if I was on a plane, that'd be kind of amazing. You know what I mean? You're just like, mm -hmm. you know, Ooh. running through episodes of whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm watching For All Mankind right now and that doesn't need my attention all the time, but I could be playing a Game Boy Advance game at the same time. That's an interesting thought. Uh doing the inverse right so i was mm -hmm. thinking about you know just using the bottom screen but i wasn't thinking about disabling the top screen like turning the top screen off oh yeah i'm wondering yeah. if battery life improves in that respect you know whatever watt or two especially right. at low end wattage you're you know that matters greatly yeah totally interesting That's another well, thing i can't remember sorry with the nintendo ds did the gba games play on the bottom screen too Yep. Or was that the, yeah so yeah yep. another yeah. another ds like thing right <clears throat> pretty cool the only thing that sucks is that the regular nintendo ds is not great on this because there's no emulator that has separate windows like i've i've tried them all like That's and, so and like it's just some old standalone ones from like the mid 2000s that i even installed on here but there's no separate window one and so you don't have the benefits of like citra with 3ds or simu with the wii u where you can just separate them out maximize them and you're good to go like you have to stretch one screen across the two and it's really hard to line them up and um, so it hasn't been that great but uh, which emulators are you using for windows for ds uh, so there was one called like oh, gb no no dollar sign gba yeah no that cash. one has like a, a dual screen kind of almost kind of setup but it's it's not the same and then i tried retroarch obviously and there was one other standalone one i tried i can't remember what it was but you know yeah i don't i don't know if i'm allowed to say this <laughs> i haven't i have like this is a while ago uh, whatever it's so long ago i have a, a windows build of drastic um mm. uh i should probably uh <laughs> i don't know i don't know <laughs> you should probably call my lawyer <laughs> uh it's a weird thing but uh yeah all right we'll, we'll discuss that later okay yeah that would be amazing if there was a dual screen thing and retroarch's not set up to have dual screen for any right. of their re emulated systems it's something that people have been requesting for a long time um but yeah, that's the one hold back for me is that I have not found DS to work very well. Very, yeah, that's very interesting device. And Russ, damn it, I only have so much money and I don't <laughs> want to buy this thing, but it looks so cool. Um, yeah. it'll, I know it'll just be sitting around here and I wouldn't use it as much as I'd like to, but it looks really, really cool. Um, uh, let's move on and talk about the games that we've been playing this week. Uh, before we do, I just want to mention that later on in the show, we're going to talk about the whole debacle with what's happening with Xbox. We had a lot of people because we posted, I posted the podcast in um, like, I think it was like an hour after I posted the podcast, all this stuff about Xbox came out and a bunch of people uh, left comments talking about that. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, and maybe we'll we'll talk about what quadruple A gaming could be. 
But first, let's talk about the games that we've been playing this week. Jimmy, um, you've been playing the same game as me, uh, and that's yeah. Helldivers 2. Do you want to set that up? Because I'm having a blast with it. Dude, this game kind of kind of came out of nowhere, really, which is weird because the it's it, the first one's really good. So the first Helldivers was a top-down game. It's like a four-player co-op experience, and the reason it was fun is because it had friendly fire. So when you'd call in airdrops and stuff, you could blow up your friends, and then you have like and basically infinite amount of lives in that one, I think. And then so you could keep calling in your friends, and it had a good online system where it was like get in, get out gameplay. It was great on Vita. Uh, but then this game got announced, and it's the pretty much exact same game, but they switched from the top-down perspective to like a third-person perspective, and. I don't know what the budget was on it, but it feels like almost AAA in just production value and just tight controls gameplay wise, the shooting, the amount of stuff in it. But this feels like the perfected version of this game. And I was really excited to see that when it dropped, Sony had a real surprise hit on their hands. Like it made its way all the way up on Steam. It's on PS5 as well. And yeah, I put since Thursday. 17 hours into this game holy so shit I, all i've done is play this game with like different <laughs> groups of people like on thursday i was playing with uh jake from game ranks to do his before you buy and then friday i was playing with like one set of buddies and then yesterday i was playing with another set of buddies and it's just like it's it's such a good game in the sense that like it feels very difficult when you play it because of the friendly fire and like you're calling in airstrikes and then if like your friend calls one in and doesn't warn you you get like totally destroyed by it but like if you just pay attention give it like one percent more attention than another game it actually isn't that difficult but it does such a good job at making you feel like you're always getting out of a map with like nothing basically and like the music's so amazing and the unlocks are so cool like you just are constantly unlocking like crazier and crazier things and they all kind of matter is i'm like blown away by this game i think i'm going to be playing it for a while because it seems like they're going to support it for a long time and it's only 40 dollars yeah like it's yeah. it's not the full price game that that, that everybody else is putting out or 70 yep. you know it's a 40 dollar game that has, a, I think, just a ridiculous amount of replay value. Like, this is the perfect game to have in your library to play between those big releases. Yeah. And th there's so much about this. Like, I like that, that you said it seems really hard, and I do think it is pretty hard. But yeah. if you give it just a little bit more attention, you will do so much better. So, for instance, one thing is reloads. When you reload in that game, if you like have a half of a clip and you reload, you are throwing bullets away. And you really need to manage your ammunition. So you need to finish oh, the clip goodness. or at least keep one bullet left in the clip in order to um, maximize the amount of ammunition that you have. On top of that, you reload faster if you have a bullet in the clip than if you don't have a bullet in the clip. So if you reload with one bullet in the clip, not only will you reload faster, but you're also maximizing the amount of ammunition that you have access to. And it's can... things like that are cr just crazy. Plus there's like all these little like pods all over the place that at first you just think they're, you just, you just look at them and you're like, Oh, that's just decoration. But no, they explode when you walk near them and it like, cut your health down and then you got to use up your stims in order to to stay alive and it's stuff like that that makes this like it it takes the skill ceiling up much higher uh but it's such a fun fun game what were you gonna ask carrie uh, i'm saying this game is like purpose built to just be the worst part of my own muscle memory because every <laughs> fps game yeah. i can like yeah. shoot once and like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, i have a moment i'm like reload <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. it's muscle Same. memory for me i'm not thinking reload i just do it so Correct. this game would just be nothing but punishing me <laughs> time, and time again <laughs> like oh my god i can think yeah. of like 10 hours of this like oh i just threw away 30 bullets <laughs> I do that. The coolest yeah, thing I went about back it. And I was playing. Oh, sorry. I was, sorry, I was just gonna say. I I, uh, I went back and I was playing Gears of War for emulation testing. Oh, nice. And like the active reload of that, I was like, I can't do this. Like, I just want to press oh, the X I button. You know. So anyway, it's so cool. But yeah, yeah I like, love it too. 
the way you call in airdrops, like, because you have a loadout at the beginning of every match where you can, like, assign, they're called stratagems, and you unlock them at a computer on the ship and everything, and you assign your loadout, and when you call them in, it's like you have to hold L1 and then enter a D-pad command. So then that creates, like, a series of D-pad commands. Yeah, and they can be, like, long, because there's, there's, like, a side objective you can do in a map where it's, like, this illegal broadcast zone and they want it blown up so you can call in this thing called like a hell bomb and it's got like 19 inputs on the d-pad so like when you're standing there using the d-pad you can't shoot or anything so you have to like have your buddies watch you or you have to like find a corner to like call in this a hell bomb and then that's awesome like they the amount of detail is crazy like there's a side objective where you have to launch an ibcm like nuke and in any other game, it would, like, launch into space, and you might see a cutscene at the end or something like that of the match that shows you launch the nuke. But this game launches it, like, half a mile away, and you can watch it, like, arc, and then when it lands, it's, like, a nuclear explosion, and then it does, like, the shockwave and everything across the map. Holy it's, like, cow. everything has, like, the, like, fine-tuned little details, which is funny. Like, I was, like, thinking about this, because I was, like, why did this game take so long when it first was announced because they've been working on it for like seven and a half years and then now that yeah. i'm playing it i'm like oh they were just doing everything like they didn't miss it's like a single thing so i can we go back like i i don't know anything about this game like the moment i hear a sequel in a game and i've never heard of that game like gog boldy gook five like i'm like i don't care you know so <laughs> yeah. i didn't even pay attention to this <laughs> this looks like it's like starship troopers like yeah. is it pve yes. like you're fighting bugs Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. I hate it. Yeah, yeah. There is friendly <laughs> fire, so you can shoot people, and um, which I actually like because I was teamed up with some randoms, and it made me have to th- like I was aiming at a at a uh, bug, and one of my teammates d- wasn't paying attention and r- ran between us, yeah. and I had to think for my t- to to myself stop shooting for a second so he can go by and then resume shooting. Yep. And I thought that that was really cool. But, you know, you talk about Starship Troopers, which everybody's going to hate me. I freaking hate that movie. I, I think it's terrible. <laughs> but I love what they're doing here. Like, there's this thing at the beginning where there's, like, this recruitment thing. And I think I must have missed it when it was in State of Plays before. But but something in my head said, oh, I kind of remember this. Um, but it is exactly like Starship Troopers. And like when you, you, you don't really play a character, I think that you are playing a character who's on the ship and then they, they send down your hell diver and then you get killed. And like, if, mm. if I'm partnered up with Jimmy, he can use a stratagem to do a reinforcement and he throws out a little reinforcement thing. And then my new character who sometimes is a man, sometimes is a woman comes down and, and you know, I I get to control my ship as it's falling, my uh, drop pod Which as is it's like falling an, it's down. It's a bullet. It's just a, yeah. It's a it's a bullet. It's a <laughs> bullet, awesome. and you can aim it at giant monsters if they're marked, and then you land on them, and then your character pops out of the top of this bullet, and he says <laughs> something ridiculous every awesome. time. The the callouts, the dialogue in this game is fantastic like they'll scream out for democracy or it's just (laughs) super ridiculous stuff that very much sounds like it was pulled straight out of that terrible movie which i hated but i love it in this Hmm. Uh, you're definitely gonna get some hate for sure i know everybody loves that movie (laughs) it's like like paul verhoeven loves it you know yeah the the gunplay that i've seen of it just the the clips of that i was like oh man that looks that looks tight yeah just the few gunplay of uh, parts of it that i saw i was like i'm gonna have to pick this game up um yeah it's it it looks it looks crazy impressive i'm glad that it's doing numbers um it's yeah it's uh it looks great it looks great I think the, the fact uh, that it's pve really makes it interesting to me because if it's a pvp like a battlefield game it's like well, unless yeah. i'm playing it on the first week and then keep playing it like i'm just gonna get creamed if i actually try it yeah but this is like one of those where you know there's strategies involved i'm sure it gives the developers time to like create new like in destiny they have these things called strikes and it's like a 20 or 30 minute kind of run through of some sort of plot element and so they could set up things like that with a pve environment and yeah that'd be awesome yeah the 40 dollar game like yeah, it's crazy. Right? The value it is. is I mean, there's battle one. pass stuff as well, and and like there's other ways that they can get your money. But I appreciate that it's forty bucks, and I don't feel 
I don't feel like I'm hamstrung by not doing yeah. the battle pass or war bond or whatever it's called. Um, one thing I will say, you know, you mentioned the gunplay carry is like your, uh, you have two reticles. So you have like your main reticle that points where you want it to point, but then you have the other reticle, which delays a little bit. So if I'm holding my big, long machine gun and I decide I'm going to point over there, right? I look over there and it takes my gun just a little bit of time to get over there. And it, it just feels really, really good when you're playing like that. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's cool. And then you Looks can really tap good. like R3 and go into first person and that gives you like much better aiming. That. Yeah. And then if you have like a machine gun and you lay down, it gives you like perfect aim. So there's weird little intricacies baked in there. And then if you hold reload, like it gives you a whole menu to navigate on like changing your firing mode and like which wow. scope you're using and stuff. And it's like, it doesn't tell you any of this. Which is, makes it no. more fun for me because I'm like that's discovering yeah, stuff just on the discovery. fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how bad it would be is like is like you press the X and it's like bloop, and it's like read all these things and like <laughs> yeah. nope, yeah, uninstall. Yeah, like, whatever. Yeah. This game. <laughs> it's intuitive enough where if you just if you see the menu, you instantly know how it works, which is right. like cool. That mm -hmm. whole thing of like not knowing and someone telling you, you're like, oh, really? And it's like it like makes you want to play more rather than the whole tutorial nonsense of like here's what x does press x did you know that pressing x can make you jump like really <laughs> crazy i mean just talking about it makes me want to stop recording and go play right now because it's it's Doesn't, really yeah. really good jimmy are so, you playing on playstation or pc so good i question. bought it on both because i saw on the playstation blog that it was going to have cross play or cross save at launch Mm. Turns out it just has cross play right now, but they're adding in the save functionality. So I I just committed to PC, and then I've been plugging my razor blade into my TV and using my Dual Sense wired. So it's like nice. a, a little mini PS5, but mm. yeah, it runs on PS5. It's oh. 1080p 60, and you can in performance mode, and it holds 60 very well. But you can kind of see some like jaggies because it uses its own upscaling. With the Dual Sense, is wired working with the Dual Sense features or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was wireless work with dual sense features or just wired only? No, it never really does in my experience because okay, yeah, Bluetooth that's, kind that's of screws it up. Neat enough. Yeah, yeah I, I own a, I bought a few dual sense controllers even before I bought a PS5 just because I wanted like Steam Day. Oh, Steam, Steam OS, Steam in general, Steam button configuration thing was supporting dual sense, and yeah, uh, I just I still have a hope that Sony just has better driver support coming eventually for I PC. Know. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great yeah, cuz yeah. I have the DualSense Edge and that's what I use between my PS5 and PC and I would love if they just clone yeah. that Xbox USB yeah. dongle that lets you mm -hmm. connect wirelessly like not over Bluetooth but there yeah, was, PC it runs great too. There was this is random, but there was like a DualShock 4 connector in Japan, right? right. Like a wireless connector. And it, it came out here. It was for it like yeah, I had a PC. So, yeah, come but on. But that Sammy. doesn't work with DualShock or DualSense. And then they so, just put out that link adapter for the earbuds, mm -hmm. and that doesn't right. have that functionality. <laughs> right. Like that's the only reason for that to exist, dude. Yeah, yeah. What are they? I doing? will say I've been using the DualSense Edge as well, and I'm glad because I find using the D-pad and the left bumper at the same yeah. time really uncomfortable. So I have like one of the levers oh. on the back as my L1 button, and it's so cool. much more comfortable. So mm. if you're using the, the DualSense Edge, just bind that that back lever to your left bumper and your your hand, your left hand is going to thank you do you ever see those people that play weird like their index finger will like be pressing the d-pad buttons and they'll be using their middle finger for i've seen yeah, some people just claw. have some really like double claw like techniques and double I'm like, claw <laughs> yeah <laughs> they like scoop their two fingers around yeah. for the face like, yeah. i see some it's people bizarre. just playing like like, I don't know. And I, I've tried it before, and there's, like, certain things that I've done. I only do the double claw technique in, like, F-Zero for GameCube just because Y is, like, boost. And I'm yeah, always... That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always, I do that. It's, like, yeah. the one game that I'm always, like, well, this is just easier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in Helldivers, I... When I do the, like, D-pad command for reinforcements, I'm usually running away, so... I like hold the controller like L1 <laughs> and stick forward with my left hand and I use my right hand to punch in the, <laughs> the D-pad and I'm like oh, totally great. mastered it. That's, that's so great. cool. Yeah, my so, first my initial thought was I don't like that it was the D-pad commands and I didn't I didn't want that, but after using I like I wanted a menu instead. This yeah. is so much better. It's really good. What were you going to say, Rich? Yeah, I have a question. 
if uh, this is the first of these like games as a service games that like you know Sony was going to go all in on, was that was their strategy, their initial strategy, a good one? If they keep them all this small and this focused, where like mm. mm-hmm. instead of the idea being like what Suicide Squad is, which is like right. let's right. have this go on forever, right? And be as right. big as possible. If they come out with like a bunch of littler games that can build a smaller community for a forty dollar purchase, and then like I love that, you know, you have di- different things for different people. Yeah, that'd be good. Like I don't like with live service where the approach with every other game has been cast the biggest net possible, so you have no identity. Absolutely. Right. Like Absolutely. this is the way to do it. I agree. Like 100%. So, yeah. I had a question about that too. Like, how, how is the like gameplay experience? Is it a procedurally thing where you just like s- thrown into like some sort of map, or is there a progression to it? Like, do you, can you beat this game? And mm-hmm. you, there's like a you watch it in real time from your like overhead ship. So like, if you're in a part of the galaxy where a bunch of people are doing missions, you'll see all of their ships in the space, and you can see the ships launching like stratagems from space, and like you can see the other people battling on the planet. And every planet has, like, a bar where it's, like, the enemy race will be, like, usually winning. But then it'll, like, give you the goal of liberating the planet. So every time you finish a mission, it adds, like, 0.1% to the bar. And Mm. then that kind of, like, changes the whole, like, galactic map. There's no real story. That's kind of how the story is playing out. They said that there's going to be, like, changes in how the planets work or, like, what the bugs or the Terminator robots do based on how quickly you liberate the planet or whatever. And then mm. there's this whole other element where the developers can watch people play and insert like buffs or debuffs based on how well or bad they're doing. And they definitely <laughs> did it to us last night because we were like just stomping this mission. Like we were flying through it. We, it was a 30 minute time limit mission and we like got done with the objective in around five. And then mm. two of the like giant spider mega bosses just like came out of the ground and we were like, what the, we, Not they so were fast, us, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an extraction shooter. So you go, you have like a mission will be like, launch the IBCM or like kill 150 of these bugs or they have like mm. nests. So you throw grenades in the nest. It'll be like kill nine nests. And then you run to the extraction point and then you have to hold out for two minutes while okay. the ship comes. And if you run out of That's time, awesome. the ship just shows up and then you have to get there before it leaves. So you know, mm. it's, it's, it's easy it's to win. Right. Like you, that was the, the comment made that live service games that are smaller in, in nature that you just, the, the thing that you do is you you make this small thing. Either you're going to be very tight, like how Helldivers 2 is, right? Like you have yeah. whatever you're doing there, but everything's super tight in this narrow scope. And then you also take a look at Sea of Thieves, which is this wide open thing that it didn't seem like it had much there. But for whatever reason, there's a big community that, that sprung up for Sea of Thieves and continues to exist for Sea of Thieves. And that has yeah. been like evolving over time as well. Uh, it's a it's, it's really interesting thought. I hadn't thought much about, you know, uh, almost almost like it was early access even like grounded grounded was also uh, a live mm. service uh unfinished live service game i wonder if that just generally is a better way you could find out by checking achievements right like what percentage of players have the first achievement you could then you could see how much engagement there actually is in the game yeah yeah i think i think a lot of like publishers in general just overestimate like or underestimate how much people just want unique experiences right yeah. like yeah like it they they keep going for like the blockbuster and then they get surprised by like among us and you know more recently right. uh pal world and stuff like that. they get surprised by these things kind of forgetting that people just want different experiences like yeah and that's that's really all it is. Once you have the you know the fourth, fifth games as a service game that plays like the last one, uh, you mm-hmm. know, people are not going to yeah. be as interested. You know, you this speak one has. Of, oh, sorry. Go ahead. This one has the battle pass system, but you find the actual premium currency like in the maps, and in like I played about six hours yesterday, and in that time I had about five dollars worth of more than i needed to get the next battle pass like it's so ridiculously generous with just being able to find the credits do you find that because you have the battle pass because i haven't seen that but also like finding the stuff is just like a little thing on the the ground it's small they're in those and then they they're more common i've noticed as you get to higher difficulties so like when we got to challenging we were finding them left and right and you also find the war bond medals faster that way too very cool. It's like, 
that's the that's the free to play slider. I was like, are we yeah. gonna charge for this game or are we not gonna yeah. charge for this game? Yeah. Think, oh, we're charging for this game. Make these easier to find. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for what it's worth, like the reviews on Steam, even though you know it's getting so many players, but I think that that really yeah. the, the players tells you what the actual people are thinking and the reviews tell you like sometimes the vocal minority in some ways, but the the reviews are mostly positive. So not like very positive or overwhelmingly. So around 75%. And a lot of them complain about stuff like that, right? Like, yeah, it was mixed all day on Thursday. (laughs) uh, Okay. The servers weren't working. Oh yeah. Yeah. They fixed that pretty quick. So yeah, that's Um, that's a good problem to have. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every yeah. service, every live service game has server issues at the beginning. Yeah. Um, it's, right. it's Rich, thing. you mentioned playing, you know, people playing different stuff or, or being on the lookout for different stuff. And you played a bunch of Next Fest demos. Yes. What were the ones that jumped out at cool. you? I'll give you two. Um, so one is called Pepper Grinder. It's just a 2D action platformer, kind of puzzle platformer thing. And it is, uh, it's really fun. So like you kind of grind away at the earth, like Drill Dozer or Mr. Driller, but like it's a lot more fluid. So you actually like can move around in kind of like curves and stuff like that. And you're supposed to, uh, they have like medals that you can get, like um, like the three coins in Mario. So like those are like the more challenging things. You can get five of those. And then the other level of challenging is like the time attack. So once you're done with the level, you can try to get go for the time attack. And so it's got these different layers of difficulty, which I love. So I complete the level and I go back, I get the, the extra coins, and then I go back and do the time attack. So I love that stuff. And then the other demo I've been playing is uh, High Tech Low Life put me onto this one. The um, It's called, what is it? Raw Metal. So it's like stealth, but also like full third person beat them up so like once you Mm. get into an attack it's like close quarters combat and you can combo Mm. you can wall splat you can launch them and yeah it's pretty fun the the way the combat actually kind of plays out and then you get these gadgets and stuff too so you can get noise makers and darts and stuff like that to navigate the stealth uh, so I think it's roguelike. I don't know. I just keep dying. So I figure I assume it's roguelike. <laughs> the art style looks really cool in that one. Yeah, yeah. I love that game. So definitely check those out. Very cool. Uh, Carrie, yeah. you been playing anything this week or too much work? Uh, work has – I've been consumed by work, unfortunately. Uh, it's, it was a hellacious week this week for me. So uh, I got almost nothing done. Mm, fair what about you russ you've been doing too much time uh, just doing emulation for your video or uh, did you actually get a chance to try something well so uh rich was uh <laughs> we were talking about the flip ds earlier and rich gave me a couple wii u titles that are dual screen and so i add, i like some of those i hadn't tried before and so uh star fox zero which is like just basically a standard Star Fox game, but for the Wii U, which I never had played before. I've been playing that a little bit. I went through probably a couple hours of it, actually. Uh, it's fun. Like it's It works really well in the dual screen setup, too, because you essentially control your uh, your ship like from the top, like you can see it. But if you want to change perspectives, you can change it. So like the third person is the top screen. So if you want to like shift over to something that's out of your periphery, you can do that on the top screen, but then the bottom screen remains your like, HUD kind of look like in the cockpit and so it's Mm -hmm. like you can see two different angles at once and it's kind of interesting perfect for this kind of uh, device and so uh, I I like Star Fox like that's one of my favorite kind of like space shooter games just because it's somewhat on rails as well Yeah. Um, and so yeah I've been enjoying that that's about it I would say that Boy, that sounds almost like it's superior to playing it on the Wii U because when you were playing it on the Wii U like you're holding up the Wii U tablet and you're turning yeah. to shoot it a thing, and you turn away from the TV. But that's true. Yeah. On this, yeah. you're bringing your TV with you, so you can still <laughs> see it at the same yeah, time. That's a good point. Yeah, I hadn't yeah. thought about that. And and this thing has a gyroscope inside of it. It's not enabled in the software, but you can just use handheld companion, and it works. And so I just installed that software, set it up as like a DualShock Four controller, and then everything works. And so it's, I can do that with like Breath of the Wild. Like I can do motion, like um, aiming and stuff like that as well. It's pretty cool. awesome. Re-reviewing Star Fox Zero. 
<laughs> how it should have been. <laughs> yeah, because it got panned. It got panned. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, yeah, when it, it got did. released. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it is, I, from my recollection, it is a good game. I do understand why it got panned. Um, it's not what people were expecting. And, you know, Bill raised some good points on just how the Wii U actually operates with it. But it is a good game. I was going to say, the um, just on the motion control real quick, I and Neo is so close. They're so close to getting it right. But they're, oh, they're also like so far, like motion EX, it's the yeah. right idea um, where they're trying to map the dual shock like the handheld companion does. Um, but I don't know why it just doesn't work correctly for me. So I, I think they're going to get it, but it's taken them a little time to get there. Yeah, totally. Like it's I was struggling trying to use their software and I was like, you know what, let me just see if handheld companion works. And it did. And I was Out like, the okay, box. we're done here. Is yeah, it still so. the uh, BMI 160 that they're still using? Uh, I don't know the, what that means. The, the, the actual the ex- gyroscope, right? The yeah, accelerometer. The yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have that, to look at the spec. That, that has a bit of a, a storied history, which is funny because when Uncle A was making the Aya Neo, the original Aya Neo... Uh, Arthur, Arthur, right? This is the, before Arthur. Before yeah, Arthur. Pre-Arthur. Okay. Yeah. Before okay. Arthur, yeah. Um, I, the, also, the name for it wasn't uh, Aya. It, was, uh, it wasn't Aya Neo. It was Aya Eve. The initial name for it was Aya Eve, and then they changed that to Aya Neo. In any event, they had the BMI-160 in it, but it was only supposed to be used for uh, accelerometer purposes. So, like, mm. if you wanted to rotate the screen so you can, like, use it as, like, a tablet. That's how it was originally, like, built. Then you had Ben, who, like, helped make a handheld companion. They went and, like, really tried extracting everything can out of the BMI-160. The BMI-160 is technically old. There's an updated version, which is in the Asus RG Ally, which is the BM3, BMI360. And that usually, you think there may be some reasons why Gyro doesn't work as well for the INEO stuff is because they're using the old stuff and they just keep on using that old mm. stuff without going to better parts at this point. That's Technically kind of old is what my kids say about me. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, I'll, Rich? Yeah, I'll say... That may be true, but also their software is because like Russ said, <laughs> uh, we could try to give them some bail, but it's the truth, right? Like Russ said it, um, and I've, I have obviously don't have a flip, but I've installed handheld companion on other eye devices and it works. Like it doesn't, I'm not saying it's the best, ac- most accurate gyroscope, but it works, right? And on their, on their software, it doesn't quite work. I say this, by the way, I say all of this because I think we are, I've been following um, gyro like influencers for a long time <laughs> i know it sounds ridiculous <laughs> we are niche. Dozens. <laughs> it's super niche <laughs> i think we're on the cusp of like a gyro revolution and i think like yeah. you know yeah like i think the fact that it's in i think it's in hell divers for example the fact it that is. it's it's being yeah embraced in a lot of these games uh fortnite a lot of sony games like we are on the cusp of like people really embracing gyro. I think you know, it's I you know it's probably the same thing of like no one actually used WASD uh, on keyboards to move around on on a PC. Right. Um, so right. like Thresh like pioneered doing WASD, and then everyone started going and using WASD to like move around for FPSs. I, I have a funny story about that. Um, I had played a million hours in Doom and you know Castle Wolfenstein, whatever. And Quake came out, and I went to the PX. This is when I was uh, in the Army. I went to the PX. I bought it. I brought it home. I installed it. And it wanted me to use the mouse and WASD. And I returned it. I said, this is stupid. Why wouldn't I use the arrow keys? This is this is a ridiculous thing. I'm not interested. No, thank you. Who wants to use a mouse and a shooter? Yeah. <laughs> and I ended up returning Quake because I didn't want to use the mouse. I wanted to use my arrow keys and the space bar. <laughs> my yeah. favorite is the, I think it's the PS1 review of Alien Trilogy gets quoted a lot. I think it's Alien Trilogy, but one of those Alien games where it was apparently like the first game that actually had dual shock and all the reviewers were like trashing it because like they didn't i mean right. dual, shock, yeah. dual dual analog um and they didn't know what to do with that and it took you know halo to get it right with yeah. like the, yeah. yeah but so halo did a lot of things with like magnetism right aim assist and all that other stuff yes. to, mm-hmm. to really make that work so it was I really the, the that whole part that like solved that thing and i feel like that's really where gyro needs it because Every time I use gyro, it breaks my brain. And I, I, <laughs> I know it's better because I see people being super nasty with it. I see people like, you know, taking on Counter Strike people with a DualShock controller and a uh, DualSense. And I'm just like, it's obviously great. 
I have to start using this. And every time I do it, my brain is just like, you know, I'm just like rubbing, you know, like, <laughs> what's going on yeah. here? Like, why is this not yeah. just working for me? I, I now better understand what you mean by that because I tried, which is a super cool feature of the GPD-1 Mini where you can put your X-Real glasses on and it will use the gyroscope in your X-Real airs and you can use that to aim. So you can aim Whoa. with your head. So oh you can hold what? the GPD-1 Mini and you can look to the right and it'll aim. And of course your screen is still on your glasses so you see it move. Um, and it, it sounded like it would be the most intuitive thing and I tried it and my brain broke. Like I could not, <laughs> I could not do it. Yeah, you start going like this, you're like, <laughs> what's going yeah. on? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great That's idea. And yeah. I, I can't wait to see people do it, but my brain couldn't handle it. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the games that we've been playing. Let us know what games you guys have been playing in the comments section down below that like button. Um, let's move on and talk about the thing that I think is probably the biggest news uh, th this week in gaming, and that is whether or not Microsoft is going third party. Um Jimmy, you had a really good video about oh, this uh, on your on your on your uh, PS Ready channel. Just start us off with that. What do you what, like? What was your initial reaction to to this kind of thing? And there's a lot of different ways to look at it. It wasn't really super surprising, just because they've been releasing games on other platforms for a while, and it seems like that's where they were trying to get with Game Pass. Because I mean, looking at the data, Game Pass plateaued pretty much, so they need more users to like make it worth it for the budgets that they need to recoup for these games so you're like all right like that makes sense it's like they want to get game pass on other platforms sony's probably not going to let them and neither is nintendo so what are they going to do well they could just sell the games a la carte on those platforms and it seems like there's the rumors are crazy it's like someone's like oh it's starfield it's halo master chief collection it's gears collection that's not even a real thing yet and like sea of thieves hi-fi rush uh, and a couple others and then other people are saying Starfield is not going to PlayStation it is definitely Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves and then Tom Warren from The Verge said it's those two games and then one other big one so th there's like this whole event that's happening next week where Phil Spencer a lot of people were saying is going to announce the end of Xbox hardware but then I guess he just did a town hall meeting at Xbox and was like no mm -hmm. we're not giving up on hardware and then we hear these rumors that they're working on a new Series X for 2026 and a handheld dockable version to go along with it so like there's just too much information to really know what's actually happening but I think the thing that you can kind of trust in is that a couple of Xbox games are going to be going multi-platform and we're going to get maybe some Bethesda games once in a while or stuff they made agreements for before they were purchased or Call of Duty will never go just single platform or something like that. Like common sense strategy and yeah. we're going to find out about it allegedly on Monday from like a business update, which is the weirdest thing to call that. Like we're going to show you the future of Xbox at our business update. So well, I don't think yeah. that they had that planned ahead of time. This th this business yeah. update, and by the way, we're recording this on Sunday. We have no, I don't know when I'll get the episode out. So if all of this stuff it changes and we are wrong about everything that we say, well, this is why. Okay, so you've been guaranteed wrong. to happen. By the it's way, it's supposed <laughs> to happen tomorrow, yeah, yeah. but like, wouldn't they so have announced tomorrow. it? No, they they like it's like they just said rumors. next week. The yeah. rumors. Are it, yeah, he it. just said next week, and then yeah, but. Like this business update feels like a reaction to the this stuff. It doesn't feel like something that they had planned ahead of time. Yeah. And the idea, first off, I understand that people like they they pick their tribe and they're like, I'm gonna stick with these guys. This is the one, and I want exclusives and blah blah blah. And th like for me, I hate exclusives. I understand why there's exclusives, but I just want people to be able to play games on the platform that they want to play them on. That being said, I also can see how some people would say, well, if Microsoft is going to put their exclusives on competing platforms, then what's the good reason to buy an Xbox? To My response would be, well, because that's the one that you want. If yeah. that's the one you want, then that's fine. But then I also see those same people saying, but most people are just going to buy the PlayStation instead. And that means that there's not much competition, so Sony is going to fly too close to the sun 
it, like they always tend to do, where they're like, well, you know, we won, so now screw all you guys who were playing the games. We're going to do everything we can to screw you. And it's not just Sony that does it because Microsoft has done it. Nintendo has done yeah. it. All these companies do this stuff where they get too big for their own britches and then they get smacked down. And Sony's I feel like, like notorious that, for it. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I feel like Sony could do forget. that. And there's wanna... the only thing having a check on them is Microsoft. Go ahead. Sorry, Rich. I just want to challenge that a tiny bit. Because you're you're absolutely <laughs> right that like modern Sony is that way, but yeah. like PS2, they're no, great. It, it, PS2 was amazing. No one sold like PS2. PS2 during and that era. four generation are like the two yeah. really good ones. Like where yeah. they're still on the rise, so you know they're not they're on the top, but they're not like firmly at the top. Right. And right. then you get the That's PS3 fair. and five, which are like just <laughs> sheer confidence and hubris, and they're like, yeah. let's throw out the portal. Let's throw out these. <laughs> Two really expensive yeah. headsets. Let's throw out yeah. the DualSense Edge and the DualSense yeah. V2 and like yeah. the yeah, PSVR yeah. 2 and like just throw everything out there. And they were kind of yeah. like that during the PS3 generation for a minute. And yeah. wasn't that six hundred dollars? Yeah, it was five ninety nine. I think they yeah. could run Linux. The PS5 is is leaps ahead and better than the PS3 though. The PS3 was yeah, full right. performance wise, rugged. it was not great. So Unless I was playing a Naughty Dog what, game. Yeah, one thing for me is that I felt like PS2 was a golden era for me because Sony didn't really exist to me. PS2 was just a machine that you would buy, and they just yeah. needed to make sure that they made that thing yeah. and then yeah. put, put the games on it. Like, I didn't have to know about what Sony was working on or what their plans were or any of that stuff. It was just a console back then. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was a thing to play all the great games on. Starting with PS3, it was like, okay, like... I felt like I just had to learn about Sony as a company at that point, and now it's just like pervasive. Like, and so I don't know. I like I like that older era. Where it was just like, hey, we've created this thing. We're just going to pump them out, and you can just buy them. And I kind of almost feel like that's how Nintendo is with the Switch right now, where it's not. I don't <laughs> really care about Nintendo and the company and all that stuff. They have just made the Switch. It works now. The developers get to make games for it, and I don't have to worry about like Nintendo as a company. And yeah. now we're at this point where we're like thinking about what is like what is Microsoft going to do like right. all these kind of things. I don't want to do that. I just want make your system, put the games on it, and let's just play. You know, that's what I'd like to be at. Do you think I that's think... a symptom of this idea that the that your library is now a cross gen thing where it follows from one generation to the next, and so where you're buying your games is way more important now than it used to be because in the ps2 generation you bought your games to play on your ps2 and then you knew when you ps you, you just assumed when the when the next system that you bought came out it wasn't going to play any of those games anyway whether it was from microsoft right. or nintendo or playstation do you think that I, that's right. a possibility there ps1 games played on ps2 and yeah and that's ps3 true. when it first started out so. had a ps2 in it so it played ps2 it games as well so i think that mm. everyone had that reasonable assumption especially with how they're going and they'll just pay the money to put the hardware in there. They're like, you know what? I'm going to have a reasonable assumption that I could buy the new thing and all my old games are going to work on there. And some of them might even look even a little bit better. Um, I guess I forgot about that. Yeah, PS Vita played PSP games and looked better on the PS Vita. Uh, So there was always this idea uh, from Sony up until like mid PS3 where they were like, you know what? We don't care about everything else. We're not making yeah. enough money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they, they, they said, right? Like not, not enough people were using. And, you know, when it came from PS1 to PS2, you couldn't see the data. But when it went to PS2 to PS3, they could see the data. And they were like, not enough people are doing the backwards compatibility. And like you said, we're putting in a whole PS2 to make it happen. So we can just cut costs by just cutting this piece out. And that's going to be a big savings. Um, I but, think. Yeah. I think PS I think backwards compatibility is really good for sales but never gets I, I think most people just never use it like they buy it and they're like yes this is backwards compatible all my games are still going to work and then they never put them in they just yeah. and and I, there's going to be people it's peace in, of mind. in the chat that are yeah, yeah I guess yeah um, yeah it's absolutely peace of mind you know, especially there's the PS three six three sixty generation was that uh, like real first online generation, mm -hmm. and Sony has been super sloppy with that. Um, insofar as PSN games and how you're going to download stuff and like the ambiguity of that, Nintendo is garbage for that. I would say Nintendo's like the worst of it. It's like we just like yeah. wipe our hands of it, right? Like uh, it's just not. It just doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah. And PSN is just open question mark. 
for what it's worth, the 360 side of it sucks only because Microsoft themselves allowed people to go passwordless on their um, Microsoft ecosystem passwords and stuff. And yeah. the 360 has no concept of a password list entry. So you have to like use a one-time password that, uh, you know, app specific password within the, and it's just, it's a miserable experience, but all of that password list stuff is actually handled automatically on the Xbox one, Xbox one X, Xbox series side. But if you play yeah. on an Xbox 360, you have to face all that garbage. So when I was playing guitar hero right. two and to get all my saves, it was rough getting, it was like spending 30 minutes yeah. just to like get my saves um, so the backwards compatibility that Microsoft has done is limited, but still very much appreciated. And I, I wish I could pop in a Guitar Hero game and let it just do all the password stuff because it knows who I am and make mm -hmm. that whole thing streamlined to fix their stuff, which they've done for a limited segment of games. Uh, but yeah, it would be super appreciated if that was the case because, I mean, how are you going to do that otherwise? So I don't know. It's... It's it. I think the PS3 and 360 generation is a, an asterisk that we can put on that particular point, just because of the uh, uh, accoutrement of things that just may not Ooh. exist anymore. Fancy accoutrement. <laughs> um, <laughs> let, let's let's real quick make some predictions. What's oh, going to happen? I have a this, super it, prediction, super hot take. So save me for for last because I've I've yeah. Boy, I have a big boy. One. all right hey guys he's got a big one so you better not <laughs> skip this section russ do you have any like what are your what are you hoping that they're going to say at this announcement this business announcement <laughs> tomorrow or whenever it comes is it definitely monday no no oh, okay. that was just this rumor. week yeah i they, feel yeah, like this it's week. not going to be tomorrow because I want some lead time, you know, like yeah, yeah. Super Bowl. They're all hungover. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> exactly. you know, the thing for me, I, I don't really care. You know, I I have kind of stopped using the Xbox as a console, like other than just as a Game Pass machine at this point. Uh, I even like I bought a Series. X. I have a Series S. I've been using it for years. I love it. I mm -hmm. bought a Series X because they were like two ninety nine, like earlier this year or last year. And so I got one and I was like, yes, now I can put my discs in, like my Xbox One discs and stuff. And so I picked Halo 5 and I was like, yeah, now I don't have to re-download this. I can just throw it in here or whatever. <laughs> and then it had to download it. Yeah. And so I like lost like five hours and I'm like, this is not like the whole backwards compatibility thing like was just moot at that point. I'm like, I can't believe I bought this thing. Like, I don't know why I did that. Anyway, mm -hmm. so as a console, I have not been using Xbox if they just announced that they're finding new ways to get Xbox or exclusives or Game Pass games to more people, however that's done through, I don't think it's going to be on PS, like PlayStation or whatever, like more access on my Steam Deck or whatever, love it. Other than that, I don't really care. Like if it goes away as a console, make it an, a Game Pass machine at this point, which is, I think, not a bad move. Anyway, that's me. That's fair. Carrie? I think that they're going to solidify that they are going to continue making hardware uh, is just to kind of pull that co concept out of people's minds. Uh, I don't know why people think that they would do that when they are still have 25 million Game Pass subscribers. And if they did that, they would be sacrificing a lot of those because there are people that aren't doing that for PC Game Pass. Uh, so there still needs to be Xbox hardware to be made. Everything else about exclusives, I think that they're going to tiptoe around and not really address. Uh, I don't even think that they're going to mention Activision Blizzard all that much. And I don't think we're going to see a lot of newer Activision Blizzard games come to Game Pass Day 1. Especially because there were contracts and stuff where bonuses are on how much a game sells. And if it's on Game Pass, that's going to ruin those whole things. And people are going to lose their bonuses and be super pissed off that you know, Microsoft made this artificial thing happen that ruined all of their bonuses and, and, and uh, game tar like targets that they would make bonuses on and stuff. So there are contract contractual things from Activision Blizzard side that are still carrying over this year and possibly next year where it's not, I don't think Microsoft's even going to address that. I think they're just going to take a look, a few of the bullet points that people just went ham on and be like, Starfield is staying exclusive. Uh, so you predict Starfield is staying ex exclusive? I don't care what, which way one or the other. Okay. I'm just saying that if if Starfield is not exclusive, they won't talk about it. If mm. it is staying exclusive, they will just put. Uh, uh, they'll just say it's it's staying on hard. Uh, at the current time, it, it you know whatever they're they're looking at everything, it's staying exclusive. We're still making hardware. It's going to be like a 10 minute thing, 
and they're just going to address the things that everyone went crazy on uh and they'll in that direction if there's something to comment on they'll be specific if they don't want if things are going to be non-exclusive they're not going to talk about them and i think that's the direction that they're going to go i i, I would have lost money just then because i thought for sure xbox handheld would have got, got a mention there <laughs> <laughs> jimmy well what do you what do you think is going to be happening this week i think the halo master chief collection and gears collection rumors sound good just because they put those experiences on playstation uh playstation will finally get a good shooter and then people will be able to get the trophies and then they'll be like, oh, I want to play Halo Infinite or I want to play Gear 6. And then those will be exclusive. It's good marketing. It gets people more interested in buying Xbox hardware. I think Bethesda is going to be the wild card where a lot of their games are going to be going uh, multi-plat just because, you know, they, they can just look at Activision and say, well, you're letting them put Call of Duty on everything. You're letting them do what they want. Let us do our thing. Because what Carrie was saying with the bonuses, I completely understand that. I'd be so pissed if, like, I made that transition to Microsoft and then because... 15 million people played the game I worked on for a decade, Starfield, uh, but they played it on Game Pass and didn't buy it. I don't get a bonus anymore. I'd be, like, yep. devastated. I, I don't even know what I'd do. So I feel like we're going to get a little bit of good and bad here, and I'm excited about the hardware just to see what they do and see if it can move the needle because it's not good that the Series X is selling less than the Xbox One because the Series X is a much better console in terms yeah. of, like, raw performance yeah. and game library. And it has Game Pass where you can just pay the sub fee and get X amount of games every month. So, like, they need to fix the mes messaging here with this the Xbox brand, and hopefully they can figure it out. I would really like to see, number one, as far as Game Pass and these bonuses that, that you're talking about, I would really like them to do what Sony's doing where you have, and I think most people don't even take advantage of this, where you're, every month you get demos where you can play the game from the two-hour hour. trials. Yeah. yeah, something like that. You can play that trial, and that might get somebody hooked enough to then buy it. Um, as far as Xbox selling their games on other platforms, uh, Microsoft has said over and over and over again that the reason that they buy these games and these publishers is so that they can have something to put on Game Pass. Microsoft is playing a different game than PlayStation is. They are really, really focused on this subscription service. And I always said that I think the best move for them is to, you know, they get these publishers, they put it on Game Pass, it's included in your Game Pass subscription, or you can also buy it. And if they're not willing to sell it on another platform, well, then that's money that they don't, those, those are wallets that they don't have access to. So I think it's perfectly reasonable for them to sell their games on PlayStation. Again, I've always been that guy that doesn't like exclusives. So I I don't I like it's not like they're only going to be on PlayStation. So all of the people who got like really ticked off about the idea that these games would be coming to PlayStation, I'm like, you can still play them on your Xbox. Why do you care? Uh Rich, yeah. what's your hot take? <laughs> Yeah, so a few things. So first that the challenge to that, right? And you said it before, which is that like it's not that they they're worried that other people get to play those games. It's more so that I spent 500 400 dollars on this thing because I made a choice to get these exclusives. Whereas I could have spent that money to get the other thing, still get these games and also get the PlayStation exclusives. Like it just, they made a choice and they can only potentially afford one. And, you know, now they have, now they get, they, they get to keep their exclusives. They get to play their games, but they don't get to play the other games and the other t team, right. Gets to play the other games and your games. So it just kind of sucks in that way for those folks. Um, and yeah, I do, un I do understand that. Uh, yeah. 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 So the, I never really bought this thing only because uh like playstation games are coming to pc they're coming later but hell divers 2 came day and date steam sales are fantastic uh mm -hmm. i don't think that i know it's a uh, games as a service game which doesn't get as much hype as single player games do on playstation yeah. and why 
for a lot of all intents and purposes, this kind of flew under the radar because you didn't have the PlayStation fan base hyping it up at all because it's not their it's not their yeah. modus operandi, right? Like it's not it the, what they very, do. It is a very PC game in that way, right? Like uh, yeah. like Deep Rock Galactic and like these are the games mm-hmm. that blow up. Right. Is these sort of games, yeah. So sorry, go the, ahead. No, 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 it's fine. It's just that I I think that when you when we look at this <laughs> angle, right? Sorry, my phone. Uh, when you look at it through this angle of uh, people being upset that I think that there's a core Xbox group that like Xbox and they just want it because that's where they prefer playing. And even though that the exclusives might come on PlayStation, the thought of going to PlayStation when they don't have any of their friends on PlayStation, none of those, it's going to be going to an ecosystem that is not something that they find attractive to them. So that whole argument of whatever games are going on there, I don't really buy and it's been one thing that, you know, PlayStation has had a strength on for a long time now. And uh, the PlayStation 2 was a pivotal moment where a lot of people became PlayStation hardened fans. Certainly. And uh, you, I mean, I, I rag on the PS3 all the time. I can do it nonstop. The PS3 was absolute garbage. It was less performant than the 360, came out a year later, was more expensive, and yet still sold 100 million consoles. That is through the sheer power of the PlayStation 2 alone and people that were PlayStation fans. And that still carried over. And PlayStation 4 was a fantastic console. It was just absolutely... They, like, knocked it out of the park with the PS4. And then Microsoft came out with the, the X-Bone, which was the, just fell... F- like, they made their own PlayStation 3, except they didn't have a real ps2 to back them up they had the xbox 360 but the fan base that was there was kind of fluid you had people on 360 you have like the what do they, what do they call them shooter bros what what is the term uh dude bros dude bros yeah, yeah you had dude bros everyone was uh, like ps3 were like oh just dude bros play on there all the dude bros left 360 and went to playstation 4 so they exist there now and it's i don't buy the well the exclusives over there and i said why did i buy this box they buy it because there is 25 million xbox fans and that's all that there is to it and you you like i can't i can't buy that but let me good let me get to my hot take because i think it speaks (laughs) to that right all right so my prediction is not about what happens this week i have no idea what's going to happen this week i really like jimmy's take and that sounds like the most plausible in terms of just what will happen this week um but my take which is my most like charlie and so is sunny is that like this is all the pc's fault this is all <laughs> the fault <laughs> of the PC. The identity of consoles is like eroding, like bit by bit. When we went totally. to x86, we w- you know x86 hard drives online, digital, uh, and now we're getting to a point where yeah, these games on consoles are coming to PC, and so in in a way, it, it goes the identity. Uh, spectrum goes Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, where Microsoft is at the lowest end of the spectrum and it's continuing to get lower and Nintendo's at the highest end of the spectrum where their identity, their brand is just super strong. And that's where you and I differ, right, Carrie? Because we talked about this on Discord where I don't think it's their fans, right? Like they've had, you say, you know, 25 million sold because of, of the fan base. But like when the Wii U came out, it sold 13 million. And yeah. then the next one comes out and they sell 100 a hundred million above that number. Right. And that's because their brand identity is strong and in and, and it goes against what Russ was saying, right? But it's for the reasons that was Russ was saying. It's that people aren't the the brand is strong because people aren't really thinking about it. They're just thinking, this is a cool machine, I can get cool games here, that's what I'm gonna buy. Uh whereas Xbox in a few years, if things keep going the way they are they're not going to have a reason for people to buy this machine. And you might say Game Pass, but you also just said that's 25. Like the amount of people that subscribe to Game Pass is 25 million or less, right? So like they have to keep pumping. They have to keep losing money to get people subscribed to Game Pass. And that has to be the reason that people buy the hardware, which I think is going to, if they don't change something, that's going to erode and people are not going to want to buy the hardware anymore. Does Game Pass lose money? That's well, nobody what knows, been... I don't think. Yeah. Oh, but, okay. But, yeah. Well, what is they the, but the Xbox division makes uh, sites a profit? So the Xbox, right? The the my understanding of the stuff that has come out most recently is that the growth of Game Pass has slowed. 
Right. Yeah. Right. It's like totally and, plateaued. Right. And that they are switching their strategy, Xbox as a whole, from focusing on loss leader, right, uh, strategy where they want to get in people's homes to becoming a PL where their profits do matter. And so that to me, I connected those dots where it seems like the Game Pass was the loss leader. They were looking for the growth there so they can at least get the user acquisition. And they're not getting that anymore. And they also so, lose, oh, they're going to lose a lot of people's trust if they implement this like full force strategy where everything's going to come to PlayStation because that sentiment that you're just beta testing a game for PlayStation players on the Xbox oh, yeah. by playing it earlier, <laughs> that's going to grow so fast, especially mm -hmm. with how busted a lot of games have been coming out like even starfield like it was content complete i would say at launch but it was not a very well performing game and they've done a lot of patches but imagine in a year in september if they do put out like starfield on ps5 and then it not only has all these patches that they've done for the past year but the dlc as well in this nice little 70 dollars package that's going to piss people off on the xbox side and it's like i don't totally disagree with them but like that would be reason enough for me if i was didn't have a console already I'd be like, well, I'll just wait because I'll get a better version of the game if Why I just wait. Why do you think wait. that's opposite for PS5 players when they come to P PC, though? What do you mean? Oh, God of War comes out much later and you get the, you know, whatever. Not, not Sony all doesn't PC really ports. do a lot of DLC. And most of their games when they launch are pretty much as close to, like not perfect perfect performance wise as you can get on ps5 like you don't have to wait a year for patches on playstation 5 games because they're third person open world action games that are content complete at launch whereas xbox has a bunch of different genres and depending on the game you might be getting a completely different experience at launch than right. it would be in a year but yeah, to jimmy's point how different was god of war once it released on pc to the yeah, original like the launch game. well i had yeah. like the new game plus which came out three months after the only thing that I would say is that PS5 does run on... It's not DirectX. It's their own their own API. So it does need to get ported to PS5, which does not guarantee that it's going to be free of bugs or free of performance issues. Just right. because it, it's the latest version does not mean that it's going to be like the super polished version of whatever. I'm just saying like PC ports of PS5 games have come out and they've just been like l the last of us. Is one yeah. game where it came out and you're like, geez, guys, that, that, that was what, are, what are you doing? And Sackboy was not great at launch. Yeah. Um, Sackboy, you know, that, that the patches came for that pretty fast and hard, and that yeah. came out pretty good. But ultimately, when you talk about this, whenever I mention this, I'm like, oh, that PS5 game, I'll wait for it on PC. And they're like, yeah, good luck waiting three years. And that's been the general sentiment. So I wonder why it's the reverse is like it's OK now when Xbox games go to PS5 as if they're going to come in six months to less. And that's OK. I'm just wondering where the where the split here is, because oh, I, I, I think, Carrie, you got to remember day. that people are they're not consistent with the way that they feel about things. They, you know, yeah. like what's OK <laughs> for Xbox things. to do is not OK for PlayStation to do. And what's OK for PlayStation to do is not OK for Xbox to do I, because yeah. of tribalism. I think I think the real <laughs> the real distinction, though, right, is what you're talking about, right, is what the way that PS fanboys defend the PlayStation. Right. But what Jimmy is talking about is the way Xbox fanboys are going to lose their loyalty to the brand. Yeah. Yeah. That's the distinction. So he, Here's the thing that's kind of just all this that I'm hearing, and I, I, I need your guys' kind of input on this too, is I feel like Microsoft is heading towards a reckoning where they're saying mm -hmm. two different things that don't make sense together. And that is one, yes, Game Pass is awesome. You can play it anywhere. We're trying to make it so that you can game you know, on your phone, on your TV, all these kind of things. But then also, please buy our exclusive hardware mm -hmm. too. You know what I mean? Like they're yep. saying two things that are d just opposed at the end of the day. Like which one Correct. is the most important? Because only one of these can really survive at the end of the day unless they change what they're doing. So wh which way is it going to go? That's, I that's feel like, exactly yeah, what we'll it find feels out. like to me. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like Microsoft has made this decision that they are playing. They're trying to play the long game to where eventually the box under your TV doesn't really matter and you'll just be and I know that people hate this but you'll be playing your games on the internet through a little dongle that plugs into the back of your TV when they say we're going to keep making hardware I do think that we'll see another Xbox from them but after that 
I don't think we're going to see another after that. And I also don't think that we'll see another PlayStation after the next PlayStation because it's all going to be just like it'll be a decoder chip that you plug into the back of your TV that plays a game that's on a server someplace because A, there's there's no used game sales ever. Um, right. No B, piracy. There's no piracy. Uh, it's all just, it, it, it makes so much business sense. And Microsoft can't just say, you know what, we're going we're gonna to do this streaming thing because they're going to get dragged, just like, just like Google did when they brought out Stadia, because it, it wasn't there yet. But there will be a point where it'll be there. And Microsoft is like, they're trying to, to like you're saying, Russ, straddle this line and I feel like they're they're standing on two boats, right? And the two boats right. are pulling away from each other. And they're like, they th at some point they're going to have to push from one boat to the other, and just go all in. But as as for as long as they can, they're going to keep one foot on both boats until they're like, I'm mixing my mm -hmm. metaphors here, but but they're like, um, uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. On the yeah, track sure. trailers in the Super Bowl commercial mm -hmm. <laughs> going down the street. I'm, I'm going to do a favor for you, Bill. Um, uh, what would, right now, for PS5 players, right? What incentive, for PS, P, people that I enjoy playing on PlayStation and don't really care about stuff that's coming on Xbox and the news that Xbox exclusives are coming to them in some form, maybe not all of them, but sometime down the line, what, if they didn't buy an Xbox before, and they're probably not going to buy an Xbox later. Is there any area where having an Xbox becomes somewhat interesting to have? In what form does that take? Is it cloud that makes PlayStation people interested in playing Xbox games? Or is it an Xbox handheld? That makes them interested. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> We've done it. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well done. Yeah, so uh, we hear we there's been more rumors swirling around that they're going to be making a uh, a handheld as of late, uh, thus completing my prediction I made four years ago. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I I think that for me, XCloud itself, I would not play it at all if it did not transfer saves like it does within the Game Pass sphere. The only mm -hmm. reason I play XCloud at all is because I know whatever I'm doing in there is going to transfer over just fine to anywhere else that I play it. And that's literally the only reason that I tolerate it, because I feel like it's an inferior way to play, generally speaking. Um, it is. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I enjoy it because it's it's like a, it's a nice thing. Like, there's been times where, even on my phone, I will use the touchscreen to, like, get something done if a game could, like, allow it. Like, there's been um, the, the card games, uh, Spire, something Spire. Slay the, Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire. Oh, yeah, yeah, I actually, yeah. I actually played that on my phone on touchscreen just because I was out and it was an, you know, a console game that wasn't really a, a, a mobile version of it where I didn't have to pay for a mobile version of it. I just played on xCloud and I was out and about and it worked. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I was getting achievements and stuff and it was still in there. And I was like, that's cool. Like, I would not have done that in any other hmm. area. But if Microsoft diverges, like you're saying, which I, I can see... I don't see them stopping selling Xbox hardware and they need to make something that is attractive to people that are hardened against a traditional console when they already have something that they like and they need so, something different. So I do have one use case where I think that both could exist. So a uh, good friend of mine, he uh, didn't have an Xbox. I think he had maybe like the old Xbox One or something like that. And But he did have Game Pass. And so he ended up, when Starfield came out, he's like, I want to play this and I want to play it on the higher version or whatever. I'm not really sure if he even works on Xbox One. But re regardless, he was playing it through Xbox Cloud Gaming on his older Xbox. And he he didn't like the experience so much that he went and bought an Xbox so that he could play <laughs> it better. You know what I mean? So there is, like, that, that game was so good that it introduced him to the idea of just buying a new Xbox, which is something he wasn't really planning on doing. And I, so there's one where they both kind of work, but that's the only one I can think of. I think that is the, like, best case scenario, right? Like, that is the goal that Microsoft has in mind. I don't know. What I'm worried is that they're miscalculating. But that is the goal that, in my mind, Microsoft has, which is like with Jimmy saying uh, Halo and Gears of War, those collections. Now, these people that like 
Carrie's saying, did not necessarily have this history with Halo and Gears of War, they can they can build this history now. Yeah. And if they're building that history, then now you have a new Halo customer, even though you're not giving them a Halo game, which is what Sony's strategy is with bringing God of War to PC, is like, oh, a new God of War fan. Um, and same, and then like the other half of that strategy is exactly what Jimmy was saying too. The the Bethesda Activision strategy, like we just we bought these companies and you know we're just cooperating with the FTC and whatnot. That's all we're doing is we said we were gonna <laughs> not make exclusives, so we're gonna we're gonna stick to that. Um, so I can see that as well. But I think they are trying to build a fan base that doesn't exist necessarily or doesn't yet exist. Um, for the games that 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 are their legacy so far, right? Yeah. So that, I mean, that's ultimately what's going to come down to. At some point, Game Pass is going to be on the line. Game Pass is going to either continue to exist and and prosper, or it has to go away. Xbox has to get rid of their consoles. They become a full third party publisher. That is the only two. That's that's a very black and white type of thing. They can't yeah. have Game Pass on PlayStation and Nintendo because they're not going to allow that on there. Because if Game Pass was on PlayStation, I think a lot of PlayStation people are like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. But PlayStation would be like, hold on. <laughs> if, <laughs> what do you think if, you're doing? <laughs> if they become a third party, there is a chance they can do it. They just lose all of their leverage. So like UB Plus, I believe, right? Like that's part of PlayStation mm-hmm. Plus. But they, would, mm. but they would lose all of their leverage in negotiations. So that's not what they want to do. Um, but it is possible to, to bring... Game Pass to Sony. Let's, it's one of the they could rumors. also say, "Hey, by the way, you know, if if uh, we put Game Pass on the plate on the PlayStation, or we put Game Pass on the Nintendo Switch, you know, for every hour that some schmuck is playing some game from Game Pass on your platform, you get a cut of our cut." Right. And yeah. like they like they could incentivize those companies right, to right. make it financially viable for them to do that kind of thing. Let me ask you. Yeah, right. but at that point, you're going to be killing sales both for Sony and Xbox because right. so think about a game like I, I'm just mm-hmm. making one up, but like say Sea of Stars, right? Which you can buy on PlayStation. And I don't know any of these. This is true, but I'm making up a game. You can buy it on PlayStation. You can buy it on Xbox, and it's also on Game Pass. If they put that Game Pass onto PlayStation, no one's buying it on PlayStation. That's now they can just play it for free. Yeah, and so yeah. all of a sudden, Sony's now losing sales by having Game Pass. Yeah, on I, exactly. I don't. I, fact. There's there's a part there where. I wonder at what point the the platform holder will be like, no, thank you. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your thing is outrageously attractive, and it's going mm-hmm. to devastate us in some ways that we're not ready yeah. for. Because right. great for us as gamers, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, could you imagine, do you think Game Pass would get more subscribers if Game Pass worked on Steam and you didn't have to use Xbox Game Pass anymore and you can just use Steam? So totally. it's like all the numbers, every number. <laughs> yeah, like mm-hmm. oh, I can just do that. Oh, great. And then if yep. Steam Deck had Game Pass, I mean, come on. I mean, I know there's only three million uh, Steam Deck out there, but like, still, that's you know how many. There would the, be more. There's a number. Yeah, there's yeah. a number. Yeah. There, there's like, for some reason, there's like seems to be zero interest. I got to do this thing last year where it was like me and my friend Ray who does Xbox Ready, and then a couple of other YouTubers. We got to have lunch with Phil Spencer at like a restaurant in Marina Del Rey. And it was nice. so, I was like, I'm doing that. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And it was weird because it's just like, yep. It's like Phil Spencer just like sitting next to me at the table. And I was like, he asked for direct feedback, like criticism, whatever. And everyone kind of had their oh, own wow. things. But I was like, get the Game Pass app running on the Steam Deck. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're just missing out so much on yep. potential subscriptions there that are like outside of Steam, which is even better for you. And he's like, oh, like, don't don't you just use game or Xbox game streaming? And I'm like, no, why would I do no. that? I'd rather just buy the game on Steam at yeah. that point because then I can play it on the Steam Deck. And he, yeah, correct. I saw it in his head, like, click, like, okay. But he was like, I'll look into it. And I haven't heard anything. But I was like, <laughs> my I guess, did my part. My guess, I tried to convince you did. Him. Yeah, you did. And we uh, we all appreciate you saying that to him. Him saying, don't you just use the streaming thing? tells like that's just a pad answer like yeah. he's sitting there like and he has in his head obviously. he's got a he's like there's a spreadsheet in his head <laughs> and it's like this is the question this is my answer that i'm gonna say so if you mention the steam deck he will then say well you gotta stream it um yeah. that, that was pre-rog yeah. ally too so i'm sure he would have been like uh, well we have the screen oh, device. Yeah. we're partnering with asus on it, or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
it would have been funny if you had your Steam Deck with you. And he said, oh, yeah, play it cloud. I'm like, okay, how about you yeah, play it on cloud? Yeah. Tell me how it is. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right now. Yeah. Set it up. I'd have to show yeah. them that, weird, that Reddit thread they made, like, yeah. how to set it up. That's, like, yeah. a fucking novel. Step yeah. on your left foot. Don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the apostrophe That's here hilarious. is not an apostrophe. It's, it's a, something else. It's, like, okay. it's not an apostrophe. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Well, you know, I mean, everybody's always like Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. Um, Humble Choice is very similar to Game Pass. It's a subscription. Every month you get some games, and it. I don't think it hurts the... I don't think Steam hurts from you getting these Steam games on oh, a Humble Bundle. Right. You know what, I, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, so... so that- that whole thing is really interesting from Steam's angle, right? Because the Steam keys that those are given out, Steam makes zero dollars from those. That's zero percent, and that's the thing mm. that people always would bring up about Epic. Epic's only taking twelve percent. Uh, there are ways that you can generate Steam keys, and Valve gets zero percent, and that's all the third-party stores. Green Man Gaming got their big start because every game that they were selling on there was like twenty-seven percent off, twenty-five percent off, because the cut that the 30% was getting discounted for users to come in and buy it. So people are like, oh, brand new game, I can get 27% off on Green Man Gaming and I get a Steam key. Green Man Gaming was making 5 and 3%, and all of that was getting a user acquisition. But it didn't matter to Valve either because they were getting people that were getting games on Steam. And there's like this number that they're just like, yeah, whatever, we don't care. But there is a number where you can't just generate gazillions of Steam keys and just like sell elsewhere. There right. is like a mechanism there. But they are fairly generous with how many Steam keys you can get where Valve will get a 0% cut. So that whole thing is very interesting. And I don't know how Valve dices that all down, but it doesn't. It basically means that not every game is a 30% cut. That is a yeah. like an absolute. Yeah. Yeah. They just I probably they... assume they're going to get you at some point. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, Rich. Like no, they, they're like, well, you get the key like for exactly. five bucks on G two A. Then you come here and buy a skin for the game, or like right. you might buy another game in two months that's sixty or seventy dollars, and that yep. totally makes up for what you look. Just exactly. like they get to the point where it's too good to be true, yeah. and they they do something about it, <laughs> right? But, yeah. <laughs> but there, it goes back to what like Gabe said about piracy and stuff. It's like you think about it if you think about it like lost sales, and you're trying to fight, fight lost sales. Don't worry about that the only thing you have to worry about is just making a good service for the customer that they want to continue using your platform and then i think you know like you look at steam deck and proton and all the work that they were doing for a decade and finally the steam deck happened and it's probably the closest console like experience you have for pc at the moment Uh, and i think that's like universally like accepted that whole thing is all on steam stuff that uh, you get just for being a steam customer so there's like mm. all of that stuff that has paid in their favor where just the focus is make sure that the user experience of installing and playing a game is as seamless as possible, doing as much as you can with all the controller configurations and all the, the widgets and add-ons and all the other things that just make Steam Workshop and all that other stuff that make people happy to use your platform. And I think that has been a winning strategy for Valve to do, by and large. I mean, I would say that they're 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 killing it, but... Um, yeah, it's it's a different approach, and I don't know that every company would have the wherewithal or the fortitude to see that through. That's well, the reason it... I bring it up is because I think that I don't I don't see a world in which where Valve would say no, Microsoft, you can't right. put Game Pass not at all on on Steam. I think that they would be like, hell yeah. What mm-hmm. were you going to say, yeah. Rich? That's where in my hot take, my fear that everyone hates me for this fear um and i hate you there's there's two groups They're, they just both think i'm wrong uh, so my fear is that like Val, like all of gaming is going to consolidate towards valve right like mm-hmm. if micro if the xbox identity goes away that all goes towards steam if the sony identity goes away because we're seeing some of we're seeing sony make some of the same moves xbox was making five years ago right yeah mm-hmm. so could that happen in the future if we see those identities go away it's going to be valve and nintendo those are the two yeah that's it (laughs) the thing Um, that works in sony's favor right now is the cost like the entry cost right like yes steam deck's pretty cheap but Mm -hmm. you're not going to really even compare a steam deck to a ps5 if you have nothing you're going to go for the 500 hundred dollar ps5 all the time yeah Yep, and it's probably going to stay that way. But if Valve kind of went back to the Steam machine, right, and put out oh, a five they, or six hundred dollar mini PC that's like running Pro, exactly. That's and, when and, and Sony you know they're going to do it. You know yeah. they're going to do it at some point. They're going to yeah. figure it out. They're going to release a five hundred dollar console, and more people are going to be like, 
you know what? That's interesting. Yeah. Here's my wallet. I'm yeah. holding yeah, out my wallet it. right yeah. now. Yeah. Take it. That's it. Extra, yeah. extra wallet. Uh, <laughs> not sponsored. Not sponsored. Well, I think they were sponsored at some point, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it is an extra wallet. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the last thing on that hot take is that my, my other fear uh, is that specifically Microsoft, I think paints the picture. If Microsoft were, uh, let's not say they abandon consoles because I agree. I don't think they're going to just abandon hardware. I think people are going to find less and less reason to buy their hardware. So mm. if that happens, um, what happens with their games, right? Like we, you just talked about exclusives as well. And so like all the third party publishers, the games that they make are not as good as first party exclusives, right? Like almost hands down, just in terms of, what they're able to do. This is with the exception of games like Baldur's Gate, right? Like when we think about like the big ones, the Ubisoft, Take Two, um, and EA, right? These games that they make, where it's more either games as a service or DLC pack, microtransactions, all of this stuff. I expect that if there are fewer people buying Xbox hardware, Microsoft's going to focus more on making those games and less on, you know, the Deus Ex and the Ori's and stuff like that. Hmm. So yeah, uh, the, I'm I'm gonna so I'm going down the fear route of like I feel like there's a different take there, and I don't know if it's a hot take. It's kind mm -hmm. of like a whatever take is that, and we've had this discussion before where we've seen the Chuck E. Cheeseification happen to arcades, and how arcades used to be a place that you go to to play games that have fun, to go to a place to you go to an arcade to win <laughs> rewards. Tickets. Yeah, you get rewards at an arcade and you redeem things for, for playing games rather than for the joy of playing a video game. And we are seeing that, we've seen that happen with free-to-play games where people would go there and you do like battle passes and other stuff and you're looking for a progression. There's a reward system of like cosmetics and other stuff that you're playing for that. You see the younger people playing for that. That was like the number one complaint about Halo Infinite. I played Halo Infinite and I was like, this game is dope. And everyone's like, yeah, but the battle pass sucks and i was just like what like what's what's wrong with like are you not playing this game for fun what are you doing like i couldn't understand it and you look at out we're all old right uh we're old the old generation and the old generation that is in charge right now you can see them making some moves there's lots of ip acquisitions because if you asked 16 year old me right in the 90s of like shouldn't companies be buying these ips if i told that to an older person they'd be like the hell are you talking about? Why the hell would I buy that? And you look at what Bob Iger just did with the 1.5 billion stake in, in Epic. The reason that he gave is like, you know, I was walking around and my nieces and nephews, they were playing with iPads and they were just in the, in the games and all. I was like, you just noticed that now, dude? Like yeah. 20 years ago, <laughs> you didn't guy notice that, that? The same guy that sold off Disney Interactive. And, yeah, right. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying is he is like that old generation that was in charge in the 90s didn't appreciate what we all appreciated and they were making moves for where they were what their mindset was in the 70s whereas now you're seeing acquisitions and all this other stuff of like the metaverse and all these other things where they're starting to consolidate into other ones because they value the ip of that stuff and the truth of the matter is the fear that i have is that the new generation that's coming that's 20 years uh younger than us they're playing roblox they're playing fortnite they're playing games that we don't really care about and the newer stuff that's going to be coming out is going to be that place where that place makes money. And the stuff that we care about makes less and less money, which is why you see like the things that we all traditionally care about doing less and less and all these companies scrambling to make other stuff. So that's my fear rather than the consolidation of Valve winning and stuff is that the bittersweet news is that there's a ton of games that I have not played yet that are still games that I'll love and I can play those games. But there's a deep thing in me that I just like, I really want another Zelda game to come out. And I know Nintendo's going to do that, but there's like mm -hmm. that same love. I was like, man, I really wish that they'd come out with another Halo game, but it's like all the baggage that 343 has gone through is like, oh, you guys kind of suck. And like, you know, we don't know <laughs> if we want to spend the money for you guys to make that. And yeah. that, that like, even Activision, right? I want to talk to Phil Spencer, like, dude, you own Space Quest. Can you just get Wadget I get, you know, just give them a million dollars. It's nothing to you guys. Like, it's a dime to you guys. Just give this guy a million dollars make a point and click adventure space uh, space quest game that will make a, a whatever just make me happy please just you own the goddamn ip just please do it because yeah you, the, there's like that thing but they're <laughs> not going to do it because they know it's not going to make money so it's just going to sit there and burn and it, that's the thing that kills me that's the that's yeah. the 
worry that I have is that the new generation is killing our stuff that we like. Well, that's funny because we came, we actually came to the same destination. We just took a different route, right? right? Yeah. Right. Like I, that's what I want too. I want not necessarily, I'm not tied to IPs, but I want quality single right. player experiences and right. I, I want quality multiplayer experiences too. But for me, I'm more focused on single player. So I'm, yeah. I'm right there with you. Yeah. So, well, go ahead. Good. I think it's just a generational shift that we're watching in real time, and we're all just wondering why it's happening. <laughs> it's like, why is this? Why is this boat sinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like we live in like one of the best times to oh, be a sure. gamer. There's so yeah. many games, but like you can't play them all. You can't. When we no, were kids, try. guys. When we were kids, like you played two or three or four games a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's all you really had access to, which is why we got really, really good at those games. We didn't have any other choice. Um, so, but now there's constantly something new and interesting to get excited about. Whether it's a small, uh, little point-and-click adventure game that may or may not be based on a property from the '80s, like Space Quest or King's Quest or something like that, you know, or it's this new um forty dollar game with a battle pass that you know we've been that we talked about you for, were gushing like, about I was gushing mm -hmm. about it and yeah, that's absolutely that's, that's not an IP that it, that is from my childhood but it's fantastic it's really sure. really good and it it also has all of these things that the younger generation is used to but it's also really good and I love playing it yep. and I'm gonna play it after we're done with this. Um, it's funny that it took so long to make that game because there's no way that when they were making it, they foresaw the extraction shooter being the next thing after the <laughs> right. battle royale. That's true. Like right. that is such a like lucky break for them that right now yeah. they're still in the early phase of extraction shooters. You know, you got like the finals, you got Tarkov, but there's nothing like Anthem. Uh, not Anthem. Marathon's not out yet. You know, like there's no big game yet. Like now is the perfect time for something like that, which I just think is like so funny. I'm really happy. For what, them. I don't know. What it's not the perfect time for is quadruple A games. <laughs> $70 plus a battle pass. Uh, that's no. but, but that's what uh, Ubisoft, I lost the show notes. That's what Ubisoft says that uh, Skull and Bones is. Uh, they're calling it a quadruple A game. And uh, I don't know. This game seems like it's been through development hell. And I've never heard a quadruple. good thing about it. Like, <laughs> I've right. Heard. And it's they're like, you know what? And betas and like everyone. We spent like... so much money on this. We're going to call it quadruple A. Yeah. But they spent That's money on it because happened. it was mismanaged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just took so long. It's not like well, the features. Yeah. And not just not not just mismanaged, but I forget who it was. Maybe it was skill up. But I was watching something at some point where it was like they're obligated to finish this game. Like, mm -hmm. so they may have scrapped it at some point if it wasn't like they they were obligated to the government of, I don't know, I don't remember what oh, which Singapore, country. right? Singapore, yeah. They're yeah. obligated to the country of Singapore to actually finish <laughs> this game. So they can't just cancel it. They can't just write it off. They have to finish it. And yeah, that that's a recipe for disaster here. It's, it is. You, uh, you think like uh, the the definition of like A double A triple A and quadruple A is just the amount of commas that are in numbers? That uh, literally, <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> How many commas we got? It's going to cost guy? you a lot because yes. it cost us a lot. It's a quadruple A <laughs> yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's four commas in there. <laughs> yeah. That's that's too funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, are any of you guys interested in Skull and Bones? Even a little. I'm watching a trailer right now, and I'm like, uh, no, you know, is... there's a part of me that I'm not a big pirate fan, like as a theme, a motif. I'm not the hugest fan on. There's a part of there that's interesting. Sea of Thieves is pretty cool in that it's um, there's a very piratey s things where you get a treasure map and you have to like take paces and you can count your paces. There's cool things to it. I just think that it sounds. I think it's piratey games are games that sound much better on paper than they are when you're actually playing them. Like they, when you read them, you're like, "Oh, this sounds cool," and then you play it, you're like, "Oh, right." <laughs> like I have to sail over there. You say, "Huh?" <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> all right. I, I, I haven't like watched much Skull and Bones, but what, what I have to say is, if their water doesn't look as good as the water in <laughs> Sea of Thieves, um, Sea of Thieves, thank you. Um, well, they're dead. 
because <laughs> yeah. that game is that the, the best water. water ever. Just the way the the, Dude, the water moves, it's amazing. That's what were a you saying, Rich? Joke. Oh, I was just saying, um, I like Black Flag, right? Assassin's Creed for Black Flag. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. I, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people did, and I think they were going for that. I don't They're know what happened. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I felt like Skull and Bones, like they were going for that except more multiplayer, right? Like mm-hmm. that motif, but just more multiplayer. I don't know what happened, but yeah, it just does not look good. I'm looking at it right now, and I'm just thinking they, they put so many artificial limitations in the gameplay. Like, hey, here's a pirate ship. You're limited by like the reach of your cannons and like, you know, the mm. fact that you have to sail from one place to the next. And I worry that the, all of those things that are just kind of trying to stay true to the pirate kind of experience yeah. is going to take away from the gameplay experience. Yeah. And so I don't know. There's no fast travel as far as I can tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, a, it's the Wind Waker problem. Right. Yeah, exactly. One of yeah. The, uh, Russ wants a rail gun for a cannon on a pirate ship. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Me too. Dude, uh, yeah. Thieves, uh, aiming a cannon is a science, is a literal science in Sea of Thieves. Also because you have to reload the cannon, so you're like running down to the planks and picking up a cannonball and running back up and putting it in and like shoving in and like, uh, poof, like, oh crap. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, but that's a running joke. I have buddies that play Sea of Thieves a lot, a lot more than I have, which kind of sucks for me because they just kind of run me through everything. And all mm-hmm. the spectacle of like figuring things out, they're just like, like, I don't get any of the joy. It's like, it would be like tag teaming with Indiana Jones if he had already done the adventure, right? He's just like, he's like, duck mm-hmm. your head, go this way. <laughs> like, all right. This is just this like going in a dungeon in an MMO with, <laughs> with people who've done, done the raid yeah. 4,000 times. Yeah. And they're like, go stand over here, then stand over here, then stand over yeah. here, then shoot this thing, then stand it's, over there and you're done. It's and all you're like, paint by numbers. I didn't do anything. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> it's fun to figure that stuff out. It's not fun to have somebody teach you how to do it in real time when they've done it a billion times. Times. One yeah. of the running jokes that I have with that real quick is that whenever we're playing Sea of Thieves, I'm like, guys, you take a look at the water. The water looks amazing. I always say that every game that we play. It's <laughs> like a little stupid running joke I have. Anyway, that's it. Every nice. game needs to steal the water from that game. It's yeah. it's unbelievably cool looking. Um, but that, that's going to do it for this episode of the Nerd Nest Podcast. This is a long one. I hope you guys, uh, Russ, say the thing that you always say, a long one. Grab a oh, drink. And it's going to be a long one, so make sure you grab a snack and drink. We should have done that at the beginning, I guess. Uh, Russ, you got your video coming out on Tuesday for the uh, DS? Yeah, I'm going to do this. It's going to come out on Tuesday, and then I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that. I've, I actually have, like, three other INEO things I'm supposed to be working on, and so this one just kind of went straight to the top just because I was having so much fun. So who knows after that? I have a ton of other things to review as well. I had a video came out uh, yesterday of this thing, which is the INEO... Um, AM02. AM02. This thing is so cool. I Mm. love the design of this thing. Uh, So make sure that you guys check that out. I'll leave a link to that and uh, I'll update the the document or document, the show notes after with Russ's link as well. Uh, Rich, what's going on with you? Yeah, I just finished my marathon reviews finally. I had three hard work, well, two that I've been waiting to do. Uh, Just got caught up so those were finally released and then the one x player x1 which is really interesting we talked about it here last week but yeah it was a really interesting device um and now i just released the news video so i took what what did i talk about in that news video i don't know but news news video on friday news <laughs> uh yeah it's themed yeah, news stuff yeah, yeah that's what right is, what are the shocker the yeah, absolute this, shocker the, the update the persona 3 uh, uh oh, persona right, 3 right, right. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that was a good performance update that they did yeah I always want to play those games and I because they look so cool, but I don't have the bandwidth for yet another yet another JRPG. 80 hour. I'm, all, yeah. I'm almost almost done with Final Fantasy VII Remake and I'm trying to squeak it under the wire before the, the next one comes out so that I'll be able to pick it up right away and play it. Carrie, what's your next video or your last video? Uh, I didn't do a video all last week just because I've been so busy at work. Uh, but I'm finishing up my uh, Retroid Pocket 4 Pro review. Uh, uh, there's a lot to talk about. The display has a bunch of oddities to it, uh, but the new analog sticks that they've done there, uh, like not using standard the the Switch like clone analog sticks, they done a, they've done a lot there with the tension. And even though they're small sticks, I appreciate concavity and sticks. Basically, they did they've done some things there that I really appreciate. And um, 
they're still like the the best Android handhelds that I would like recommend generally speaking. Um, but yeah, that's the video that I'm finishing today. I hope to have that done by Monday, so tomorrow. Did you Did you guys see Bob uh, Bob's tweet about the, say, yeah. with the Simpsons thing? Yeah, say, <laughs> say the, the line, thing, Bob. Bob. Say the line. Yeah. <laughs> that the made Metroid me laugh Pocket so Four is the best. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was a good line. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, what's what's your next video or your last video? Uh, whatever this Xbox event is, I'll do another playstation style think piece on that from that perspective because that was really fun to make i actually like yeah. did a little script and everything so that mm. was cool probably something like oh that. you did a script for that one that yeah just, just you... bullet points okay 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 yeah, yeah that was a good one. like eight bullet points <laughs> that was enough <laughs> yeah yeah and I'm, I'm sure that we'll end up talking about this on next week's episode of the podcast right. so make sure that you guys uh you know Go to all of the different channels, subscribe to everybody, and uh, hopefully we will see you on the next one. Stay rad, everybody.